As the miasma falls, blood calls to blood. Those twisted and lost roam a wasted land, seeking sanguine satisfaction. But a few, chosen by the burden of fate, fight back. They carve a bloody path through the ruins of the old world, intent on making sure that the mistakes of the past are not repeated and that old wounds remain closed. Code Vein is a third-person action Souls-like game. In it, you play as an amnesiac warrior who wakes up in a post-apocalyptic future only to discover that the world has been overrun by frenzied monsters and delirious mutants. As it turns out, much of humanity has been infected with a specific disease that gives them enhanced strength and speed, but also a thirst for blood. Thankfully, at least, you can still walk around in the sunlight without bursting into flames. At the start of the game, you will find yourself teaming up with a group of beautiful yet haunted adventurers who have come together to try and uncover the mysteries of why their world has been overrun by ravenous abominations. Now, as I said before, the game is an action Souls-like, and this means that the gameplay has you proceeding through a series of interlocking levels, where you will need to defeat hordes of enemies on your way to a final confrontation with a powerful boss. Should you die at any point during your current run, you will be returned to your last checkpoint and all the enemies in the level will respawn combat, such as it is, is designed to be quick and aggressive. Your character has access to both light and heavy attacks, as well as dodging and blocking, and technical abilities like being able to parry incoming enemy blows or backstab distracted opponents. You can also equip special abilities and use them in combat. And these can be either offensive damaging abilities such as fireballs or power swings, or more supportive abilities such as damage and defensive buffs. Defeating enemies in combat will reward you with currency as well as occasionally useful items or crafting materials. You can then take these items to your last checkpoint or your home base in order to increase the level of your equipment or buy useful consumables. Your currency can be used to either increase your overall character level or unlock new skills in your character classes. Different classes can then be equipped to your character which will change the distribution of your stats. These classes can then also be further customized by equipping a range of both passive and active skills, and once the skills have been leveled up, you'll unlock the ability to equip them on any class you want. New classes are unlocked as the story progresses by both defeating bosses and meeting new NPCs. Now, nailing down the positives and negatives of Code Vein is a little tricky. The game has some good design features, it has some poor design features. There are things that I really like about it, there are things that I really dislike about it. Uh, the fulcrum that I find myself pivoting around is this uniquity that there's nothing about the game that I can compliment that I can't also criticize with the same breath. Now, I can at least applaud two things. The first is that the game does have a very good character creator. There are a ton of options and costumes and cosmetics, and you are free to create the spikiest haired edgelord that you can possibly imagine. I also think that the game has a really good mana system, where every time you go into combat you have a pool of energy that you use to cast your spells and use your special attacks. But what's helpful is that attacking enemies charges a gauge that will refill your mana during combat. You can even get a big boost to your mana by performing backstabs. 
And this is an insightful system because it encourages you to use your abilities knowing that you're just going to restore them by fighting in regular combat. Beyond those two elements though, the rest of the game has me divided. A good example of what I'm talking about is the game's plot. The story, as it unfolds, is that, surprise surprise, the world has been ruined by human greed and pride, and that the monsters you're fighting were once humans who have now been driven mad by their overwhelming lust for blood. And yet, despite the post-apocalyptic setting, the tone of the game is all over the place. Your hideout, for instance, is an unusually domesticated setting, complete with its own hot springs. I, personally, found it hard to take a lot of what was happening seriously. The game wants to be an angsty tale about the end of the world, and yet most of my characters are dressed like they're about to attend a Castlevania-themed wedding. A better example of what I'm trying to get across is the game's combat. Now, on a foundational level, I think the combat's very good. It's fast, and it's dangerous with you and your opponents dashing around the battlefield to exchange blows. As mentioned before, I think the mana system is actually really efficient and effective. And there's a good selection of both weapons and skills that allow you to deploy a wide variety of tactics. At the same time, for what is supposed to be a Souls-like game, the combat can feel oddly unbalanced, occasionally in your favor. For instance, the game gives you, by default, an AI-controlled party member that will follow you around and fight with you. This character has their own skills, has their own weapons, they don't need to be directed in combat, and if they die, you can revive them at the nearest checkpoint. And what's better, even if you die, they can revive you, provided that they can get to you in time. And this is a crazy advantage, especially in what is supposed to be a hardcore action Souls-like game such as this. Having another character on the field to deal damage, or more importantly, to distract enemies, it gives you an incredible strategic edge. And it's not just general combat either. Specific tactics, such as backstabs, are unusually easy to perform. I personally consider myself of only average skill when it comes to action games, and yet even I was able to pull off backstabs and parries with a shocking regularity. And combine this with a system where you have an AI companion who can distract enemies, allowing you to very easily flank them, and it almost becomes unfair. And the only counter that the game seemed to come up with in order to mitigate this was to give some enemies wide sweeping attacks that allowed them to hit me even if I was standing directly behind them. But, speaking of getting behind enemies, the balance of combat isn't all in your favor. In particular, the lock-on camera is not your friend. There are a lot of times where after you lock on to a foe, the camera will try to realign itself based on your position and the center of the enemy's model. And this can create anomalies where sometimes if you try to approach an enemy that's larger than you, or heaven help you, if you try to dodge past them, the camera will lose its effing mind. And, as you can imagine, in the middle of an intense battle, this can be a death sentence. And what's worse is that sometimes it's not even your fault. Some enemies have special attacks or abilities that can obscure parts of the screen entirely. And so, fighting these enemies is just a desperate struggle of constantly dodging and hoping for the best.
leveling up your character offers another interesting example. As mentioned before, when you level up, you don't actually improve your individual stats, you just increase your maximum potential. Your actual stat distribution is instead determined by the class you equip. And every time you change your class, that distribution changes as well. And this is a gameplay choice that I personally didn't mind all that much, as I think that the class system gives you enough flexibility overall, but at the same time I can see how other people might not enjoy it. Since a big part of similar contemporary games is building your character's stats to your exact specifications. But probably the best example of my mixed feelings for this game's amalgamated creation has to do with the level design. Specifically, how 90% of the levels in Code Vein are absolutely terrible. For instance, at the beginning of the game, you'll start off in a destroyed city area infested by monsters, and you'll work your way through there, you'll go into some caves, and you'll emerge into another destroyed city area. And the game just alternates like that over and over between caves and cities, all of it brown, all of it boring. And I mean, I really want to give the game credit. It does try to contextualize the different areas, but it just doesn't work. For instance, here's the starting area. It's a destroyed city full of brown buildings. Okay, now here's the underwater sewer area. It's a destroyed city of brown buildings covered in gray fog and water. Okay, well here we have the desert environment. It's a destroyed city of beige buildings covered in sand. Okay, here's the volcano environment. It's a destroyed city that, for whatever reason, is perpetually on fire. Again, I want to give them credit, but this is lazy. And even when they do try to do something interesting, it doesn't work out. This level, for instance, which... Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, not even trying to hide it, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay, so this level, which I will generously call an homage to other Souls-like games, is at least visually distinctive. It's an enormous bone-white cathedral environment with ramparts and towers and flying buttresses just rising up out of the abyss for no reason. It is also absolutely miserable to try and navigate. A twisted, confusing area full of looping staircases and overlapping paths, where you must often either fall down or climb up in order to find the way to continue. The aesthetics of the level, unique as they are, here actively work against you. Trying to navigate this labyrinthian location, all of which is rendered in the same flat white color palette, is a wretched experience. Have I reached a new area? Am I walking in circles? Am I above or below where I need to be? I can barely tell. And at this point you might be saying, well, hey, what about the minimap? Doesn't that help? And the answer is no, not really because, as I mentioned before, the areas are often layered on top of one another, and the minimap only shows you your current level, so sometimes you can't even see the areas you need to go to. This level alone encapsulates almost everything that's good and bad about Code Vein. It's visually striking and made out of what appear to be simple functional elements. At the same time, it's unnecessarily over-designed and doesn't fit in tonally or conceptually with the entire rest of the game. This game's level design is so exhausting that at one point I was even overjoyed to go to an arctic environment, not because I was interested in seeing a destroyed city covered in snow, but because I was excited by the possibility of finally seeing the color blue. That's, th that's how bad it is, that I was actually thrilled to see caves that weren't just brown or gray. In the end, I would give Code Vein 2 out of 4 stars, but not a recommendation. The 
core of the game, the combat, that works fine conceptually, but there are too many questionable design decisions beyond that. There are too many frustrating levels, too many turns of tone and setting, too many spikes in difficulty based more on camera movement than on enemy design. However, if all you wanted was an aggressive, Souls-like combat experience with anime-inspired protagonists, then yeah, you could probably power through this one. At the same time, I wouldn't encourage anyone who's looking for a deeper or even more cohesive experience. Alright, well, thanks once again for listening. The blood of our covenant is strong. Until next time. Yeah, let's see here and... Ah, ah, I know this is the way to go, but the game won't let me progress because I can't get up that ladder which is retracted. Ah, if only I could use my super strength or super speed to leap over this tiny ridge. Oh well, nothing to be done. I guess I'll uh, head back to base. Oh, let's see here. Uh, just going to do a quick inventory. See if there's anything useful down here in the basement. And... Is... Is that a ladder? Is that a forklift? Would it, why have I been stymied by chest high walls this entire game when I have the tools to overcome them just sitting here? Ugh, this is frustrating.